Hey guys, good morning on the mix by Mark Mozart channel, English channel. We were just talking with our new intern, David, about uh, English accents and uh, how is your how is your uh, no German accent? My German the, accent is in the English is is really uh, really good. I'm good at German accent. No, but um, yeah, I, I was uh, listening to a lot of YouTube videos uh, the last days and. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny how you how Germans have a very distinctive accent, but mm. um, all the time I hear, hear from native speaker that yeah they can un understand the Germans really well. Mm. And as a German, you think the accent is just terrible. And okay, I mean you you told similar well, stuff. Well, I was from uh, time uh, in New York. David spent a year in America, and he has a really good American accent. You know, without. Yeah. It's sounding uh, artificial. I th think I always like to sort of uh, cultivate my German accent because mm. I spend time in New York and in New York everybody, you know, the Jamaicans have the accent, the Swedish, and everybody speaks in their accent. And so you yeah. kind of know where they come from. And then we Germans have a reputation. We uh, are the good businessmen, <laughs> very good for the concern results, for the big business. So it's good you come in the room and everybody knows uh, the German. <laughs> they are very, no drugs, no alcohol, they are very good for... Okay, yeah. fun, uh, fun aside, <laughs> without further ado, we have a Q&A session today. Exactly. Um, lots more activities since, uh, since... David, can you come in front of the camera real quick, just to... In front of which sure. camera? <laughs> uh, this is David, our new intern. He's uh, doing documentation and vlogs, so he has a lot more action on our social media channels at the moment. Yes. So, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, and he uh, did an Instagram takeover yesterday, asked some questions. So you guys have some questions and he will shout them into the into the session and Nick and I will try to give some value for you guys. So let's get it going, David. All right, so the first question is best hardware compressor and converter. Best hardware compressor and converter. Oh man. <laughs> you know, I think it's, it's what's good for the situation. So as far as compression, you can't, I mean, there's, there's so we, many different kinds of compressors. There, there's we, we, optical compressors, yeah. uh, fat compressors. So uh, I think people cubes. want some kind of, they, they want to get, uh, get a hint. I mean, for me, for me, I would say, and you're allowed to have your own opinion. Oh, that's, um, that's sweet. I think the, uh, the Blue Stripe 1176, I love it on vocals. Mm. Um, it, it puts a little attitude distortion in it. So uh, whether you go for hardware, which is very expensive if you have the original, but mm. uh, we are building our own here and there's a yeah. new, uh, Chris Lord Algy has his own analog blue stripe yeah. with black line audio. Maybe you've seen the interview I've done with Chris. Mm. And there's good plugins also. They have the same basic characteristic. I like them for vocals. But I think um, they need to be very, the vocals need to be very balanced. So I have, I tend to have two compressors in the vocal chain. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the old uh, Gates Star Level. There's a version from Retro Instruments that I like a lot. And there's also a plugin from Arturia at the moment. But you could also use uh, Wave CLA 3A or something. Yeah. Just a slow compressor first to get the level steady. And in between, we, I don't want to go into vocal chain, mm. but uh, 1176 Blue Stripe, probably my favorite compressor and, for vocals. And it's uh, it's flexible too. You can you can put it on, on on other stuff. You can put it on a bass, on a snare, on on a kick, whatever. It's, the Blue Stripe. Uh, the 1176. Okay, yeah. Yeah. The black um, face Blue Stripe. Yeah. Even even the, bl the Blue Stripe. Yeah. So most um, of the times in the box, I use the CLA 76 yeah. for that. True. For me, um, it, my opinion is a little bit more general for, for like pop vocals mm -hmm. and hip hop stuff. I like uh, faster solid state compressors like the 1176. Mm -hmm. uh, for ballad vocals, sometimes uh, tube compressors or optical compressors like mm -hmm. LA2A or Fairchild. And on the mix bus, um, 
you usually want to have a clean compressor, something like a VCA compressor um, or a Varimu compressor, mm, a mm. tube compressor. Uh, that's that's the general idea. Yeah. Um, and it the, the the single unit I think doesn't matter because there's so many good compressors out there. Mm. So uh, just listen to them, use them, and then get what you think feels best for you and your and workflow. there's a lot of good plugins so yeah uh, i don't know uh, don't get crazy over spending a lot of especially when you're in the beginning of your career you don't have the money hardware is fun because you can touch it and you can mm. you can play with it it looks great <laughs> all this sort of stuff but don't go crazy on, on investing into hardware in the beginning you know it, it maybe gives you like the last 10 percent Maybe uh, it, it sounds better sometimes. So, but but in the beginning, you your mixes are not that great that it would actually, <laughs> okay. uh, yeah, benefit from uh, from analog yeah. output gear. There was also the word converter in mm -hmm. the question. I think converters they have only one job. They need to be clean and yeah. don't give you trouble. And I think most converter designs these days, even if you get a relatively inexpensive uh, audio interface, uh, what like you know, like a Focusrite or Native Instruments has these little yeah. interfaces we're using at the Mundair, they're sounding a lot better than even the professional converters 20 years ago. So there has been a big development, Standard mainly super high, yes. Yeah, mainly because it's all the same chips used. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, there's some analog stuff where it makes a difference and where you probably hear a bit of a difference if you use uh, more expensive stuff and then the clocking might make a difference. Mm. Um, Regarding clocking, um, a, a lot of people are getting like external clocks for the systems, uh, which is fine when you use multiple converters. Yeah. But the, the most precise clock, if you use a single converter, yeah. comes from the internal clock. Yeah. And um, so you, if you use your one converter, you don't need an external clock, just a side node. Um, for me, it's like uh, if you if you are a mastering guy, you want and you have a, a, an analog setup. Mm. Um, obviously, you want a good like A to D converter. Yeah. Um, so there's like dangerous music. Burl makes good. Mm. Uh, um, like the the other one. Uh, which is called the, the, the gold The gold, unit. Uh, with L. I can't think of the name, but it's yeah. very popular and yeah. very expensive. So th these are these are good uh, like stereo converters. But if you're mixing, then just... I mean, it gets so expensive if you yeah. use high-end stuff that you end up paying $20,000 yeah. for the con multi-track converters. Yeah. We have the proven SSL, AlphaLink F yeah. SSL units here. And then we have uh, for master conversion and listening, we got the dangerous D Box Plus. Exactly. We are very happy with the setup. At the moment, no need mm. to upgrade the multi track converters. So, so yeah, I'm, maybe I'm one day the... we're, we're open. Nick has so Focusrite. Have, yeah, I have a Focusrite uh, RedNet setup. Um, and Actually, I, I don't hear a difference. They they all sound great, and yeah. it, if it's if it's spread out on like uh, twenty four tracks or forty eight tracks, then you you don't want to spend like ten thousand of bucks on on just on your yeah, converters. It's, it's it doesn't matter. Pretty unrealistic. The standard is so high. It's unless you're making hundred thousands of dollars every year with yeah, it, then, and even then, then it, it doesn't matter yeah. as well. So. Uh, Good. If anybody has input, I know there's like the Burl converters, mm. which have transformers in the past, which, yeah. you know, it's something, you know, I, I wouldn't... <laughs> you wouldn't say no. <laughs> I wouldn't say no, but... <laughs> yeah, of, of course you can get a lot more creative and expensive if you are only looking at two channels yeah. in the mastering setup. Yeah. Um, obviously, they, they have a, like, it's the, called the mother, Mothership, where mm. they have... A, um, multiple cards, okay. but it's it's super expensive too. Wouldn't mind checking the stuff yeah. out, do an AB. All right, next question. All right, the next question is best monitoring. Monitoring, best anybody, monitoring. Who, anybody who asks me about monitoring, I will always answer your room makes the difference. 
Yes. Um, I mean, we very much like the speakers we have here, but without the room, you know, we yeah. really like them. I'm a big fan of the BMWs because, I mean, and they're very popular in mastering studios, but every mastering studio that uses these speakers, they have invested a lot more into the room acoustics mm. compared even to the expensive speakers. And uh, we also like the PMCs we have here for specific reasons. But to be honest, we've tried a lot of other speakers in the same place um, and we found a really good location for them. They're very, very good speaker stands, so we can put them exactly where we want them. Mm. And a lot of other speakers would also sound really great. Because, because the room is great. The room is great. Yeah. So, you know, I think before you spend lots of money uh, into invest into speakers, you really need to look into mm. bass traps, room acoustics, which is something there's good resources out there in the book. Your yeah. sucks. We have some basic ghetto style advice if you don't have the money. But I also know there's lots of good guys like GIK acoustics and lots of manufacturers of bass traps and yeah. acoustic materials. You you give them uh, the basic layout of your room and they tell you. What to or do. even some forums. We have some stuff in the book, some links mm. for room acoustics forums. Gear Sluts has been big for that for a long time that, you know, you find mm. people who help you consult. So that would always be my answer. Yeah. Regarding speakers, um, the, the two, uh, like the three main setup is a, a small, like real world speaker, like a kitchen radio. Mm -hmm. um, a near field and a full range little speaker. aura tone. Exactly. So aura tone I think it's speaker. more important. Nick is right. Have a monitor control your controller where you can switch between between two or three setups. Mm -hmm. Most people will have two. You will have your near fields, and that could be anything from barefoot PMC Yamaha. It, it can get really small, like the the Yamaha HS5. Yeah. It's, it's a super small speaker. And then make sure you can switch to a little portable whatever. We yeah. have a number here. And so it's basically, the, the ideal monitor setup is having a one-way speaker, a two-way speaker near field, and a, like a three-way speaker Yeah, and then if, if your monitor. room gets more uh, sophisticated, then you yeah. have a full-range system yeah. that goes down to 20 hertz or something. But you, you can definitely like do a lot of work on near fields, maybe yeah. with a subwoofer, yeah. um, and then rather than spending money on another pair of speaker, look at your room yeah, and... Um, absolutely. And then think of it, most consumers, when they listen on the laptop, iPad or so, they will never hear what's going on at 50 hertz. Of course, you want your hip-hop record sound great in the low end because mm. then people in their right <laughs> have big subwoofers uh, in the trunk and yeah. you want to give them a yeah. really good balanced low end. Next question. Okay. The next question is, should I invest in an API or Neve board? Po <laughs> API or Neve board, should you invest? Uh, should you invest? No. <laughs> I would say, I mean, first of all, we're SSL guys. <laughs> I Buy would, an SSL. <laughs> no, I would, I would, SSL has a little 1300 euro little mixer. Where, mm. they, where there's, an, there's the G-Series bus compressor, there's, I think, two channels with mic pre's and yeah. a basic EQ, which I'm very excited about this little board because it gives you a lot of the sonics and tone. We mm. haven't tried it here. What's it called? Uh, six. The six, yeah. But I have a similar setup at home, X-Rack with, mm. with a mic pre and stuff. I think SSL is doing very practical stuff yeah, for lately. modern, modern exactly. music producers. And they go into the lower price range without mm. sacrificing the quality. I would never mind having a Neve or an API here, because API for me is the you know the the saturation and fluffiness you can get out of the drum sub mix is yeah. great, and the Neve mic pre is fantastic. The and, EQs are but, also great. But you you really you know if you they have this they have this reissue of the old. Mel Neve, yeah. Neve Melbourne, but I think it's 60 grand or something for a... It's, it's very expensive. It goes up to like yeah. 120 or... But 
you know, if you look inside, it's kind of worth it. There's loads of trans uh, transformers in it. It's hand-wired, handmade. Yeah, it has a tone about it, but investment is something yeah. where you put your money to get more money back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so an investment for me is to buy an 8-core MacBook Pro. You can work on for the next uh, decade. <laughs> yeah, which... Uh, yeah, which gives you endless headroom mm. for the CPO and then uh, get into a good DAW, get a good set of plugins. That's I, an investment yeah, for me. I would say if you are if you have a, like a home studio or a small studio setup, there are other things you should invest before getting a console. Absolutely. If you're a commercial studio and you're really planning, like you're doing big records, you, you need the, all the mic pre's, like you're doing uh, band recordings, you do orchestral recordings, and you're looking like into getting a console. I mean, I had the thought when I got this console here, yeah. the thought behind it was, hey, I want to be really taken seriously. I'm at a level mm. where I say, okay, if you come to me, whether as a producer or or mixer or for mastering, we want to be taken really seriously. You know, we're not, you're not going to get a, it's not 50 bucks SSL mix here, you know. Um, True. <laughs> and there, I'm pretty, pretty sure there are people advertising this on Instagram, but mm. you want to, there's a point in your, in a career where you want to differentiate yourself, mm. which could be anything. It could be the fast recall or whatever, and then you get a, a control surface or whatever yeah, um, like, and for okay. me it was the, yeah. the SSL 4000 is a classic but you know and yeah was it a good investment I think it was I think it was yes I mean we, we pretty much built the studio around the console yeah. so um, to come back to the point API or Neve both cool brands. Yeah. We love the stuff. Neve is a little bit more more subtle and more um, and and yeah and API is a little bit more aggressive and mid rangey. I would say from the character. You should think about um, you know if you like a certain flavor from one of these classic brands, they have their little um, little flavors in five hundred module yeah. series module. So you can always print your mix or your sub mix yeah. through. So a get a five hundred series module and then get a get a nice four thousand E series EQ, get a nice ten seventy three mic pre mm. from Neve, uh, get a little five sixty EQ from API and you yeah. don't have to buy consoles, you still be able to work yeah, with those exactly. flavors. So lots of ideas. Uh, yes. The next the next question. Do you know any other master program apart from Ozone? Salutus de Mexico. I mean, Ozone, I would say Ozone is a plugin. You, yeah. you first need a DAW because you can't, can you, you know, it's not. No, no, it's no, not. No, it's just a plugin. Yeah. So you need a DAW. Uh, Nick, for example, is the mastering guy here and he's working in Logic. Mm. I'm doing the main stuff in Logic because we are doing stem mastering, yeah. so uh, it's... You could do it in Pro Tools, you could do it yeah. in it Studio matter. One, you it could matter. do it in Cubase. Yeah, yeah. Um, you also, there's a, like WaveLab. Um, as a DAW for as, mastering. Yeah, but for ma mastering, so you can do your two tracks there. They, it can uh, prepare CD and stuff like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but... Yeah, regarding DAW, it doesn't matter. Just use what, what you're fami familiar with. Yep. And for mastering seats, suits, um, there is, I think, only the complete Ozone bundle is the, the only, like, where you have an EQ, uh, different different EQs, dynamic EQs, compressors, limiters, etc. But you, you also can buy, like, single plugins and modules from other manufacturers. The essential stuff is like having a compressor, an EQ, and a limiter. Waves has a thing, uh, the Abbey Road mastering Abbey Road, suite, yeah, where TG. they have different modules. The TG, the stuff they use, still use at Abbey Road, they have recreated in a plugin. That's good. That's so you mix and match, right? Yeah. Different stuff. So, so I, I often use like the Logic Stock EQ, mm. um, and then I'm using like an uh, an Focusrite on SN SSL compressor Analog. and a limiter. That's my yeah. that's my starting point. Mm. And um, 
you, you don't need a whole bundle. You can and then you can f fit in like different EQs, dynamic EQs from other manufacturers. So uh, you don't need like a specific bundle for mastering. You can al always get your components. Yeah, we. I mean, we had a lot of times what people. Uh, a lot of times people buy Ozone, mm. pull up a preset, and then that's not the solution for no, mastering. That's, that's, that's bad. You know, um, that is not, that's not mastering. You actually like and use the Ozone stuff. Yeah, but I, I really like Ozone, but I hate the presets okay. and, and the, the, <laughs> the mastering assistant because um, I mean, it's it's good if you if you have no idea where you're going and, yeah. and you want to get creative, then yeah, skip the plugins. But for me, with mastering, um, the, I want to be able to control everything. I want small changes, and um, when I use presets or the one thing that people also don't yeah. understand about the presets is um, they go much they go in much too hot. Um, yeah. If you try the presets with an average level of minus 18 dB in the DAW, and it will it, it will be fine, yeah. probably. But people have a super hot mix, and then uh, the plugin has no chance, and even analog would have no chance. Yeah. Another, Another question related to that. Yes. Okay. Is, yes. Um, according to you, what's the ideal RMS and DBFS level for the final mix before it goes out for mastering? Okay, the, so the final, what was it, RMS and DBLFS yeah. uh, levels. Um, before it goes out to mastering. Before it, go, before it goes out. So when you master something, yeah. what do you like the guys to give you? So I, I want you to bypass your limiter. That's that's more important than any level because even if you give me like a zero dB LUFS, I can just pull it down, uh, pull LUFS. the level down. Ah, full scale. Ah, full scale. Full yes. scale. Yeah. yeah. Um, as long uh, as it's not clipping, it's it's fine. Um, but you will anyway then reduce most, uh, reduce it and how much headroom do you need for your mastering chain? Usually, I like to to get six to to twelve db headroom yeah. um, just so I, I don't have to worry about the the files yeah. and i can just do my ga gain staging yeah um yeah but i think like bypassing the final limiter and, yeah. and any of your mastering devices is and and then make sure it's it's not clipping that's more important than, than the yeah final and that's level. something people should also look out for in their mixes because uh you know any analog Emulation plugin, like a like an SSL emulation plugin, um, also wants to see a lower level. You know, yeah, the v around the minus eight and mi minus twelve dB average. Yeah, yeah, you are fine, but don't slam an analog emulation because it's built to sound like analog and react like analog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, next question. What books? online platforms, YouTube channels helped you improve the most? What books, online Let's platforms go. and YouTube channels helped us improve the most? So I watch and... I uh, bought a book called Your Mix Sucks. That's how we met. <laughs> that's that's how actually, uh, that's actually how yeah, we yeah. met. Yeah. So books I haven't... <laughs> I, the only book I would everybody recommend to get is the uh, uh, Mastering Audio by Bob Katz. Yeah. Um, I haven't read any of the mixing books because I wrote my own and I didn't, <laughs> didn't want to be confused. That's an approach. By anybody else. As far as online courses, mm. um, I would say in general that we check out everything. Yeah. And that, that includes like we are aware of Pure Mix and Mix with the Masters. Uh, we have our subscription. We look at everything because, um, you know, we're also in education. Yeah. You know, I, I cannot say everything I want to say, but we're also building our own education stuff mm. with partners together. Um, and, um, you know, we put a lot of time in the education stuff that we do. We are very careful to make sure we don't mislead any people with any yeah. headlines. We don't do headline coaching, Yeah, you know. <laughs> Other it, than your mix sucks, <laughs> I, I think it's uh, it's really important to yeah 
watch a lot of other people uh, and how they are working in their setup and that actually will inspire you so i'm looking at with mix with the masters and i get an idea uh, of how I, ca I can modify my own setup. We, we have every subscription on the market. Yeah. So that, <laughs> everything. <laughs> that's, that, yeah, just uh, yeah. Watch everything and uh, see what you can relate to and what like inspires you. It's also, I find it interesting then um, when you watch something. If, especially if you're a beginner, and then five years later you watch it again, you learn other things from the same coaching material. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Because, you know, some stuff is very subtle. You know, when, when I watch a tutorial by Chris Lord Algy, there's some very subtle stuff. And when I watch it with somebody else, I, I'm looking for other things than mm -hmm. a beginner would look for. Yeah. So I learned a lot from him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he, he has a great approach, like a very intuitive approach. That's... But That's, I think you have to you have to be at a certain point already yeah. to really get everything he's saying. Yeah, of course you need to get your foundations yeah. rock solid, and then you can look into these like pros because obviously they the pros don't teach you the, the necessarily basics, the, yeah, the, the yeah. fundamentals. So because they, for them the, the basics are completely natural, like the yeah. gain staging and stuff. They they don't even think about they it. They assume that you know this stuff. <laughs> yeah, you exactly. Know? Um, but they, I mean, they, may, they of course mention it, but mm. um, yeah, I mean... You, you I, can also um, check out like uh, Warren Ewart, uh, produced like a pro. He has some pre pretty good content. Good value coming um, from him. Beginner content, really, how to make songs with a, like a budget interface. Mm. That's, that's a great source for beginners. Even the recording revolution is very useful yeah. to people and he's touching also on things mm. like gain staging and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lots of good stuff out there. It's it's, it's fantastic. Uh, it was a lot dif more difficult in the 80s and 90s mm. to find stuff like the stuff you have on YouTube now. Yeah. You might have touched on the uh, next question earlier, but what is the best 1176 model? The best 1176 model. Plugin. Generally. M model. Model. Yeah. So I mean, we, we can we can answer both aspects um the best model from like the revisions i'd say is you're e talking analog i'm talking yeah. the, the analog revisions yeah. Yeah. the plugins are based on like there's uh, the blue stripe revision b or revision a um then there is the the black ones with like c and d and E, I think then there's the, the silver face, like revision F. Uh, these are the, like the real... And then they had a low noise thing at one point. Yeah, this, LN. This, this was the revision D. Yeah, the I last think. one. Yeah, the last of the, the, the black faces were LN. They had a special edition. The, the anniversary black, edition. A black one with green, blue. 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 Yeah, the blue, okay. blue stripe, black and blue stripe that was like... This one, this one had a, like a two to one ratio. Mm. That was a special thing. So, like, f if you're talking these models, I'm I'm liking the blue strap the most because it has just a character. Um, the it's other in, ones it's are interesting clean. because the the reason why they uh, why they uh, went into new revisions was that back in the days their pr big problem was noise and distortion. Yeah. And now in the digital age, we like the older stuff because it it's has so more funny. distortion. Yeah, we're using it for character now. So. Yeah, we, we don't have to mess with uh, tape noise and, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And if, if you add like a console and all the analog devices yeah. plus a tape, yeah, um, maybe even two tapes, yeah. uh, two twenty-four track tapes, then you have to deal with a lot of noise. Yeah. And and nowadays, it's all. So Clean. plugins for me, it's the CLA seventy six, the yeah. blue stripe. That gives me everything I need. I'm mm. sure. The, I'm sure the UAD the, one is good. Yeah, that's, that's I'm sure great. there are loads of others, uh, but that's the one we're using most of the times. And, yeah. But we have hardware here as well. Exactly. Like the the Waves uh, seventy six is the CLA seventy six yeah. is modeled after uh, the unit. That Chris has, yeah, 
And this, this unit is a little bit different uh, than other 1176s yeah. uh, because of a mod. So it sounds different like like the UAD version. The it, UAD it, is more clean, more precise. Yeah. It adds great character to a lead vocal. Yeah. So. The next question might be for me, but are you excited about Studio One 5? They just released a picture yesterday. Five? Did they, we just had got like, four. Yeah. We just upgraded <laughs> to four and there's five already. I think it's they're working on it, right? Yeah. It's just okay. So. Uh, sure. You can I'm, always improve, right? Uh, of course. Um, yeah, we I checked out Studio One for um, like one to two months ago. And you're working on up on an update uh, I'm working for Mix Temple Pro at the exactly, moment. Exactly. I'm working on an update and. I think this it's it's a really good uh, DAW. Um, it has a great features for producing. It's it's more like um, with Pro Tools you have a lot of great edit features. So mm -hmm. you, you want to edit in Pro Tools. Um, like um, many Americans use Pro Tools for editing and mixing mm -hmm. and Logic for producing. And with Studio One you you can actually do both. Uh, Inside and it's cross-platform. So it's cross -platform for, for all the Windows. PC guys that, yeah. that don't have access to Logic, it's, it's one of the solutions. Yeah, if you don't want to spend like thousands of euros for a Pro Tools setup, yeah. Pro Tools HD setup. Uh, so yeah, Studio One. I'm I'm really curious what they are coming up next with. Mm. So they have, they're very quick with the updates. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next question is dynamic EQ or multiband compressor on vocals? Dynamic EQ or multiband compressors on vocals? I mean, that's almost the same, but not exactly. Um, it's pretty close. It's like multiband compressor would be the, the like more like the C6 sidechain, right? Yeah. Or like any de-esser. Yeah, and uh, dynamic EQing, I think of the, the F6, Waves does it, yeah. and uh, Even the, the Oz Isotope Oz has Oz it, Isotope uh. Nectar has it. Um, for me, I always, so it's very useful when a singer is in a certain range, but then a new song part starts and they hit a high note where it's like, oop, like Adele, hello. Goodbye. Hello, uh, the chorus. She starts. Yeah. She, she she starts shouting. Yeah. If you were to put the, the verse and chorus on the same channel strip, mm -hmm. yes, dynamic EQ would be useful. But I would put simply put these uh, this different aspects of the performance on different faders. Yeah, a complete different channel. Complete different channel, yeah. and sometimes I would have three vocal channels even for one verse and as soon as the higher shouting notes are starting it goes to different channels and you mm. can even mix them parallel compress yeah so for me the dynamic eq or multi band side chaining is more a thing where i'm trying to duck a bass yeah, when the kick comes in that was what was i uh, what i want to say is um, i'm using multi multi band compression never on its own i only use it for side chaining yeah um, like if the if the guitar, the guitars are in in the way of the vocals, yeah. like in the, in the chorus, then I use the multiband compressors on the guitars, side chain the vocals to it, and reduce like yeah. the mids. Um, and if I want to treat uh, the source signal, like for example the vocal, then I use a, a dynamic EQ on the vocal, um, or on on mastering. I I much rather use a dynamic EQ on the master channel than a multiband compressor. Yeah. So for me, if you sidechain anything, then multiband compressor for... I would say the multiband compressor might have the disadvantage that it really need, it needs to split the frequency yeah. ranges and you always hear it. Yeah. A lot of times you hear it. Yeah. So um, I'm, I'm generally not a big fan of multiband compression on your mix or master uh, the, bus. We use the Dyne 1 Leapfing a lot. Yeah, but, the, that, but that's also that's parallel. Different. That's parallel. That's parallel, yeah. yeah. So it's not so extreme. You don't hear the, the exactly. signal split up in different bands. It's just parallel where you add a certain aspect. Mm. So it, with, with all, all this stuff, it's, it depends. Um, yep. But I think multiband compressors are more... A bit more destructive than um, 
dynamic, Dyn dynamic EQ. EQs. Yeah. The next question. Cash audio or CAS rock for transformer output? Nick, I just... know Cash. Uh, I, uh, I just looked up. What's it called? Cash. Cash audio is CAS rock for transformer output. So uh, I think. Transformers he... are transformers, right? Yeah. I think he's talking about uh, emulations of, of stuff. Um, I'd say it doesn't matter. Uh, like, it, it 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 just doesn't matter. Just listen to to everything uh, and and compare it, and use. What's the Cash Audio plugin you just got? Uh, the the Clariphonic. What it's, are you using it for? It's it's on my master bus. It's a parallel EQ mm -hmm. with uh, with two different bands for for the high end. Yeah. So it's only for the high end. And um, it's it's very nice. It's it, uh, through the uh, the parallel nature. It's subtle, and okay. you can do mid side a little bit separation stuff. So I'd say I I like Cash Audio. They are doing great stuff. They they come up with an like the AR1 plugin. That's a basically a, a modified Emi compressor. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's. I read about about it. It it should sound very great. Need to download also it. Also, isn't it. isn't the sound of transformers uh, what makes the eleven seventy six special? The a input, little, yeah, a little bit. Be because on the eleven seventy six, their the early revisions they had a transformer uh, on input, input and stage, input and input, output, input and output, input yeah. and output, and at the revision F. Um, the, the, the more recent one, there was like a, a chip input stage mm -hmm. and a transformer output stage. Okay, only and output, it, yes. it, it has an impact on the sound. Um, so, yeah. But regarding the question, there's no, no real answer. That's just use your ears and um, I, I tend to cash audio if you ask me, but I'm just one, one in a million. <laughs> Okay, next. And uh, the last question. The last Can one. we use software emulations or having hardware is a must? Can we use software emulation or having hardware is a must? Software emulations. <laughs> 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 no, um, I think software is becoming better and better and it's more affordable. So as we, 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 we touched on, on that... I mean, uh, for 99% for for of people, software is the solution yeah. and it's practical and you, you rather buy an 8-core MacBook Pro and then have fun with your plugins. Then you, but then, you know, you start buying a mic pre mm. and then you have fun seeing what it does. Yeah. And then you can buy an EQ or 500 series is a great... It's a great starting point because it's it's affordable, it's it's modular, it's flexible. And I've seen the um, Midas brand from Behringer yeah. has a 10 slot 500 series rack for 209 euros yeah. here in Germany. That's and they have some inexpensive modules and you can for pre, for decent money you can get a couple modules, try your API, try your SSL Neve, mm. Rupert Neve, whatever. There's so many modules. I think that's a good uh, Einstiegsdroge. What's it called? Yeah. Entry drug. Entry drug, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I if mean, you don't smoke, I think, and you you stop smoking and you put the cigarette money aside, you can get pretty once far. Once a week, you put a five yeah. bucks into a, a bucket. Yeah, uh, smoking is more expensive than five bucks a week. Uh, maybe ten bucks. Beach. <laughs> <laughs> how, mu how much money you can save if you stop smoking? Maybe. 50 euros a week. Oh, 50 that's, euros that's a week? the rack after a month. Damn it, that's, <laughs> okay. that's insane, okay. I, li 50. I like the concept. Yeah. And if you stop doing weed, even like sky's yeah, the it limit. Skyrockets <laughs> and <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, but, but one thing, um, if you're using software, um, you need to limit yourself a bit. You need, to, like, I, I really like the thinking, I like to think, if I have, like, 
having an analog desk inside the DAW. Mm. Um, be, because the, the, the great thing about the console is, if you mix with the console, like you have like 40 tracks or 48 tracks, you know everything's there. There's no hidden tracks. Um, there's no stuff going on. Like you, you don't need to scroll. It's everything. Plugins there. are all open already. It's all open. It's <laughs> within in the reach in your hands. So the workflow is the biggest advantage of analog. And also, you you don't you simply don't have like 20, 11, 76s. You maybe just have like two or four. So you really need to so decide. So you start thinking, okay, where do I really need it? Yeah, where? What is the important mm. stuff on your mix? In your mix, and that's uh, like this mentality. If you transfer this to software, it almost doesn't matter. So yeah, just get your routing straight. Then you can get similar results. Yeah. Exactly. Because most the biggest problem is that people get confused by the by the possibilities. Yeah, and they like they put twenty plugins on each channel, and yeah. <laughs> obviously it it doesn't. So sound good anymore yeah. so uh, and then if the gain staging is not good and they yeah, slam every yeah. plug-in then you're destroying mm. the audio so I, I could only use one plugin I when I start a mixing session um, I, I pull on the, the the waves SSL channel on every track and that's is, that is 90% of, of the work mm. because it has a compressor it has an EQ and um, then I Occasionally it, insert spe special things and, like and 11. And the session doesn't get too complicated. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Next. That was it from Instagram. That, what that is was it. it. Okay. Do we have questions on Facebook? Um, what's the best interface? The best audio interface. I think. It depends. I think a lot of times uh, people uh, asking me, um, should I go for uh, an UAD Apollo because yep. they have the latency-free plugins, monitoring, whatever. Yep. Um, and me personally, for vocal recording, I'm a big fan of having an, having real analog monitoring. So yep. uh, I like to use a little. SSL summing mixer or something, or now we can use the uh, dangerous yeah. D box because it has a summing for vocal monitoring. I really think you should avoid having any latency on the monitoring, and of course, most little interfaces have a have a hardware monitoring where it's it passes the direct mic signal through. Then the question becomes. Uh, do you want to give the monitor, of the singer's monitor on the headphone a little mm. EQ compression where it gets complicated? Yeah. So for me, that's the main question. Um, the disadvantage of universal audio for me would be that once you start working with it, you realize you need a lot more CPU power and you need to mm. buy more cards and then it gets very expensive. Yep. I think if you want to go for an Apollo UAD, uh, uh, get the small one and use it for the monitoring. Mm. Put the plugins for the singer on the monitor. I actually, there is, uh, when it says zero latency, there's still a latency, but yeah. I don't know how much you feel it's it. Like, like I don't know. Below, I haven't. Below I haven't, 10 or uh, yeah, 10 yeah. milliseconds. So I personally trust analog monitoring on recordings. Yeah, yeah so. so and and the, the standards the, are so high. Uh, like all interface, there's there's no bad interface out there. Yeah. Not not a really really bad interface. I, I have to say because you bought it and I bought it. We recently bought a little Yamaha interface, yeah. which uh, is an interface that's the AG AG06. AG06. They build it yeah. for streaming because what you actually can do, you can mix two mic pre's and your your line sources and your computer yeah. connected to USB and you can feed the stereo mix back into the computer yeah. so you could for example I I say it because it's something my 12 year old daughter is doing mm -hmm. she's uh, playing back um, karaoke playbacks mm -hmm. from YouTube sings and records it back into yeah. the computer and you can mix mix and match it on, and you on use the it to do tutorials exactly. in your setup yeah so uh, and it's 150 bucks. Yeah. In Germany, it's 150 euros. 
And yeah. you can you can also power it with a power bank and use yeah. it like for mobile, mobile. podcasting, recording yeah. or so that's very clever, I think. Yeah. I also think the new hundred bucks native instrument, black interfaces do a good job. I have one of those in my mm. project studios. When it gets into professional uh, territory, then the, the dangerous D box yeah. has a direct USB connector. So we have the dangerous D box USB connected to our monitor, and whoever plugs his laptop to the on the mm. monitor with USB C is connected to the yeah. setup here, which is very practical. So I view the dangerous D box mm. as like the top of the range audio interface controller controller yeah. slash you could run a mastering studio yeah. with. So you see, it's it's really dependent on but your it's, needs. It's um, it's how much is it? Two and a half thousand yeah, dollars. Yeah, it's not cheap. <laughs> yeah, um, it really depends on your needs, and uh, you just make a list what you, what you need from your interface. Do you need analog monitoring? Are you recording? Are you vocals? recording? Yeah. Or yeah. Are you just listening back? Do you more need like a studio controller? Do you do tutorials, live sessions on yeah. YouTube? Then the Yamaha is yeah. a killer value. Exactly. And yeah, and then just list the features and look for any interface that provides yeah, the features. Absolutely. Uh, one no. more question. Uh, what reverb time do you have in the bass frequencies in your studio? It's reverb everything time. is below 300 milliseconds. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All, right. All right. Cool. First. Q and not the first, but we will do more of these Q&A sessions. Cool, Make yes. sure to follow us on Instagram at Mixed by Mark Mozart on Instagram. Um, thanks for all the Facebook international audience. Um, and we want to do this more often. Yeah, and, and, and don't hesitate, like ask questions and we collect them and yeah, do another Q&A soon. Yep. See you all soon. Right. Bye. Bye.